Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to talk about attic insulation. There's a lot more to this than you might think. So I want to talk about the different types of insulation. I want to talk about some of the design challenges uh, when you are building your new home that you need to think about before you put insulation in. And then I'm actually going to show you in my own attic what I did. The first thing we should talk about is whether your attic space is going to be conditioned or not. Is it going to be heated or cooled? You need to answer that first before you can really start looking at the different types of insulation that you're going to use. The vast majority of people are going to have an unconditioned attic space. So they are going to be uh, basically insulating the floor of their attic. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. The common ways to do this would be either bat insulation, or you could do spray foam, or you can do two different types of spray and insulation that's not foam. It could be cellulose, that's generally the one that's used for a lot of people. It's actually mostly made out of recycled paper that has fire retardants and that sort of stuff in it or it's going to be a spray in uh, fiberglass insulation. Bat insulation does a fine job of filling the cavity that is between your two roof trusses, but it does nothing on top of the roof truss. That's one of its big downfalls. Spray foam insulation does a great job of sealing everything. It, uh, you're gonna get virtually no air infiltration with it, and it has a great R value, whether you're using a closed cell or open cell spray foam. It's going to be a really good thing. The one thing you wanna be really careful of is when they're spraying around light fixtures, and whoever your spray foam person is will know what to do in those situations. The next would be spray in fiberglass insulation, and it does a great job as uh, creating a thermal blanket within your or attic space. It's going to fill those uh, cavities between your roof trusses as well as it's going to go over the bottom cord of that roof truss. The one thing that it does lack though is uh, it doesn't compress very well and therefore it's not a good air barrier. So if you've ever gone into a home and you've gone up into the attic where there was fiberglass insulation, if you noticed that that fiberglass insulation was very dirty, that's because there's a lot of air movement actually through through that fiberglass. Couple that with the fact that that fiberglass, you know, if it gets on you or if you inhale it, it's really itchy and it's irritating to your lungs. And honestly, I just don't like using it. So for my preference, I, d I stay away from most of the fiberglass stuff unless it's like bat insulation when I'm doing walls. And then there's cellulose insulation. And again, I think that's what the vast majority of people use. The nice thing about the cellulose is it's made from usually 85% recycled material. With that cellulose, the nice thing too is that it actually compresses a little bit so you're going to spray it into your attic at a certain thickness and it's actually going to probably lose about an inch of thickness as it compacts well the good thing about that compaction is that it actually gets dense enough that it stops air infiltration. So it acts like a good air barrier up in your attic. It's also a great insulation that can be sprayed over existing uh, insulation types, whether it's bat insulation or fiberglass insulation. You can cap it with the cellulose. There are a couple other different types of insulation like mineral wool or uh, like a polyfill, but those aren't nearly as, as common as what you would normally see. If you're building a new home, one of the things you want to think about is your roof trusses and the actual design of the roof truss. Here is one of my roof trusses. It's the design of it. And you go to the bottom right hand side of that truss. You're going to notice that there's actually a vertical piece of wood that goes from the bottom cord, which is just that bottom board, up to that top cord, which is uh, basically where your roof deck connects to. That right there is called the heel. And your truss manufacturer is going to ask you, what do you want your heel height to be? So your heel height is the distance between the top plate of your wall to the bottom of the roof deck. So you need to know what that distance is so that you can determine your heel height. Well, one of the things that people forget about is they need to actually insulate on top of the walls, not just on top of the ceiling. You wanna keep that thermal blanket as consistent as possible, going all the way from the outside of the wall on one side of the house to the outside of the wall on the other side of the house. 
So if your heel height is too small, you're gonna have a very small amount of insulation that you can actually put on top of that top plate and you're gonna lose efficiency. So figure out how much insulation you need, how many inches of insulation you need, and then add about two inches to that and that should be about what your heel height should be. And the reason you add two inches to that is you're going to have most likely some sort of a baffle, an insulation baffle that you're gonna put in place that actually sits down from the roof deck about two inches to allow airflow to go uh, from your soffit all the way up to your roof vents up top so that your attic space is vented. Having proper roof venting is very very important not only at the top of your roof but at your soffit as well. Most places around the world are going to require some form of uh, soffit vents. I went ahead and put continuous soffit vents all the way around my house, but if you are in an area where hurricanes are prevalent, a lot of times that code is going to be completely different and the sustained winds can actually get through that soffit vent and start to uplift your roof and actually pull it off. So in those areas, if you are in hurricane areas, follow whatever your local jurisdiction tells you to do. But for the majority of us, you wanna have a well-vented roof as well as a well-vented soffit so that it feeds that roof. Now let's go look and see what I did. So we are up in my attic right now. And the, actually the very first tip I wanna give you is I don't know if you can see that, but that right there is a switch for lights. So whenever I built this, I actually put lights up in the attic and that's one of the best things you can do and it's probably something that a person is going to forget about. As you can see, there's a light right there but there's also an outlet right below it and that outlet is on the exact same switch so I can turn everything off but I put one here and then if you look way down, you know, it's a big old house, goes a long, long way down there. I've got another light over here, I've got another light down there, and then it actually turns to the right again, and there's another light. So I actually have six lights up here, and it does a pretty good job of illuminating things. And I also put another outlet way the heck down there, so if I ever needed power, I've got it. But anyway, that's one of those things you probably don't want to forget. Look how big this area is, it's just huge. Right now we're over my garage, that's why there isn't any insulation yet. It's my intent to put some at some point, but I put all of the baffles in, so these are the attic insulation baffles. Their main purpose is to do two things. One is to block off the area going to your soffit so that when you blow in your insulation, you don't fill up your soffit. Uh, it also allows you to see this right here is actually basically my top plate to my walls. This is an ICF house, insulated concrete forms, and that's actually a 2 by 12 right there sitting on top of the walls. And so when you're doing insulation, you want to make sure that you fill on top of the walls as well. Well, this sets back so that you can get to the edge of the 2x12 or whatever your top plate is there and then allows you to fill on top of the wall giving you a much better insulation package. And up top here you can see there's a nice gap in between the, the roof deck and this and that allows the airflow from the vented soffits down below to go all the way up and I have it on every single cavity going all the way around the house. So I don't know, I think there was about 200 of them in my house, but it's something you do not want to forget. And again, it allows you to put that insulation right on top of that wall, which is very, very important. Another note is that top plate right there. If you're building an ICF house, you want to make sure that you put something between the top plate and the top of that uh, ICF wall, that concrete, because a lot of air seepage can go just right through it. And so you can either use like a, a sill tape, it's kind of a foam that unrolls and you just put it all the way across and then put your top plate on it. Or you can just use some spray foam, just put down a bead of spray foam towards the outside, the middle and the inside, and then basically wet set it with your 
uh, your top plate there, cinch it down and it'll be perfectly sealed. Right here is the end of one of my roof trusses. I wanted to show you that's the heel right there. So basically from the point at the, the top plate there all the way to the roof deck. So it's a really tall heel height right here. Or if you look over there, that's actually a 912 pitch and that establishes the heel height right here. This one is a 12-12 pitch, actually sits higher, but uh, the main reason is that the two roofs join at the right place to allow your soffits to be the same size. Anyway, that's your heel height. That's what's gonna establish that, uh, that distance between your roof deck and your top plate so that you can put your insulation on top of it. And if you look through there, you can actually see my vented soffits. That's looking down in it. I just put continuous vented soffits throughout this house. I blew in cellulose insulation and it's pretty continuous all over the place. The one thing I didn't realize was that I am pretty severely deficient on how much I actually put in. Didn't realize that until I came up to make this video. But if you look at that ruler, I have about six and a half to seven inches worth up here. So that's gonna put me in the R23, 24 range, something like that. And my area, it's recommended to have a lot more than that, R38. So as you can imagine, well, I just found another job for me to do. I feel like a bonehead because I didn't do this right off the bat, but it's better to catch mistakes at some point that can be fixed, and this is definitely one of those. So I'll come back at another day, add another five to six inches worth of cellulose insulation and see if we can reduce my bills even further. I thought I was doing pretty good and shoot, I have a lot of improvement I could have done up here. Part of the reason blown in insulation or the spray foam insulation is awesome is because it actually covers all of the, uh, the bottom cords of the roof trusses. So as you can see right here, that one is exposed and you know, wood is not a very good insulator. So if you can cover those, you at least get some insulation on top of them and you just have a much better thermal blanket. Hopefully that gives you a visual of what you're looking for whenever you're doing your insulation. It's interesting, I started this video, you know, hoping to give you guys great tips and tricks and show you what I did and what the right way is to do, only to find out that I didn't even put in enough insulation in my attic. The good news is everything's designed correctly and I can go back and I can fix that, of which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy at least another 100 bags worth of insulation and I'm gonna spend a day blowing more of it in into my attic. But that's one of the nice things about having blow-in insulation is if you are deficient, you can fix the problem. The beauty too is it's not that terribly expensive. I can do what I need to do for about 800 more dollars. That's pretty cheap to add probably an R20 value to my attic. If you guys wanna see me blow that extra insulation into my attic, let me know down in the comments. It's a pretty straightforward job, but I don't know, sometimes visuals can help. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.